Hey friends, welcome back to another video. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if it's your first time here. Today we are talking about herbalism 101, your basic supplies to get started with. So hi, my name is Erin McMurtry and I am a health coach. I'm a home herbalist and I'm excited to have you on my channel where I talk about home herbalism, herbalism for beginners and natural earth-based health and healing. It is your birthright to play with herbs, to connect with the earth and to make your own medicine to support your health at home. So I'm so happy that you're here. If you didn't know, I also just started a podcast. So find me on Spotify or anywhere else where you listen to your podcast. The podcast is called Real Herbalists and there's actually a playlist on my channel on YouTube where I have the first episode and a link to find it on Spotify. So just wanted to announce that in case you didn't see. So today we are talking about my top favorite beginner herbalism supplies to get you started. And I want to say thank you to one of my subscribers who requested this video. I love making videos based on your guys' requests. That way I know that you actually want what I'm creating and that it's actually, I know it's actually helpful for you. So feel free to reach out anytime on YouTube, Instagram, or my website to send me questions or requests and let's jump in. So first I just want to say that with herbalism, there are many different supplies that you can start with and it really helps to actually know what you want to make. So if you aren't sure about that yet, I suggest checking out my podcast. I have a podcast episode where I talk about 10 different herbal projects that you can do. I think that's actually coming out next week. Um, but I would suggest that you have a bit of an idea of what you want to create first. That'll help you to narrow down which supplies you actually need and which ones you possibly don't. So uh, let's jump into the actual supplies. So first, jars. Oh, I love jars. I'm a bit of a jar nut and it kind of drives my husband a little crazy, but um, they're so fun. I love collecting them and there are so many different shapes and fun sizes. So if you don't really want to spend a lot of money on jars, I highly recommend just upcycling the glass jars that you have in your pantry from your food or drink items that you purchase at the grocery store. Um, I have a few here. Let's see. I have this one, which is from a peanut butter, peanut butter jar um, that I saved. I have this one, which was a salad dressing jar. I saved this for herbal oils that I'm going to use in my kitchen. Uh, let's see. This is a beautiful little jar that my husband got me on uh, Amazon, I believe. So I have so many different ones. Here's a spice jar that I saved from, yeah, just like spices at the grocery store. And I'm going to make my own spice blend to put in here. I actually have been doing that and I really, really love it. Uh, I found this at a vintage flea market. I think it's a salt and pepper shaker because there's two of them. And this one, I have some frankincense resin inside. So just know that you can get super creative with whatever jars that you have in your pantry. Um, yeah. And you don't have to spend a lot of money. So that's a great way to do it. Uh, I do recommend that you get yourself some smaller two ounce jars like this one, for example, if you plan to make tinctures or herbal infused oils uh, for the skin. This way you can put smaller amounts inside your two ounce jars and keep them in your purse or your bathroom or wherever. Um, and then you can keep the larger container with actual larger a batch of whatever you made in your apothecary and out of the sun. So it is really nice to have some two ounce droppers. These are just ones I get on um, Amazon. So, and then I just recycle them over and over. So once you have yourself a few of them, you can just clean them and reuse them. Okay, let's, next let's talk about mason jars because that's obviously a really common thing to use and they are awesome. So here is a quart jar. This is 32 ounces. This is what I would call like a large batch for making bigger servings of tea or infusions that you want to keep in the fridge and drink throughout over the course of a few days. Um, I actually love drinking water from these too because it keeps me from having to run back and forth to the kitchen and it actually helps me drink more water. So I love just having some on hand to just drink water from. Quartz are also nice for larger batches of things like larger oil infusions. Typically I don't do oil infusions in 
a, a jar this big, but sometimes uh, oxymels, which are a mixture of herbs, honey, and apple cider vinegar. Infused vinegars are good for bigger jars. And also if you do fermenting, just a side note, I like fermenting in quart jars. It is really nice. Um, it's a perfect size for that, I find. And fermenting other veggies. So that's a quart, which is 32 ounces. Then there is a pint jar. This is actually a wide mouth pint jar. You can get the regular um, mouth size, but the pint jar is a 16 ounce. I would say this is like a medium and probably the best size to start with if you're getting started and you don't want to make like huge batches of things and you're not quite comfortable with it yet. This is a great size also for storing herbs. Next is the half pint. So this is eight ounces. This is what I would say is like a small batch. This actually has a batch of sage infused honey in it that I made yesterday, which I'm really excited about. So these are more for, yeah, smaller batches, I would say, uh, eight ounces. And then there is the quarter pint, which is four ounces. And these are extra small. These are my favorite for if you want to make salves or butters. They're really nice to just use for, yeah, salves and butters or um, putting them, you know, applying them daily on your skin. Also want to mention that you can get plastic lids for your mason jars. Sometimes I like doing that for salves and butters and other things, but you can get those on Amazon. That's what this is. So yeah, those are the different sizes of mason jars. There's also some other sizes, but those are the main ones. Uh, I do want to mention getting wide mouth versus regular mouth. So this is a wide mouth and this is a regular mouth. So a little tip that I learned from Cami McBride is for the regular mouth, what you can do is you can actually get an Osterizer blender. And what's cool about this is you can screw off the bottom, the blade, and you can attach it to a regular mouth jar and then put it on your blender. So that's really nice if you are uh, blending up your herbal infused oils. I really like it for that. And there's a couple other things that you can do that for. I mean, you can do that for whatever, but um, it is just like a really nice tip. So this is an Osterizer blender. I don't know if any other blenders do that. I do know the Osterizer ones do. Um, yeah, so that's just a tip. If you plan on doing something like that or investing in the Osterizer blender, I would definitely make sure that you have some regular mouth mason jars because it will not do that on the white mouth. So that's just another tip. And then the other thing I wanna mention about jars is clear versus amber. So the amber, or you might see blue uh, glass or green glass, the reason that that is there is to help keep out the UV rays of the sun. So that will actually help to keep your oils and tinctures and things last longer because the sun can degrade the oil faster. So if you're worried about that, then you can get amber or colored glass jars. If you plan on keeping your medicines and stuff in a dark place, it doesn't really matter. It's not that big of a deal. Most of my stuff is in clear glass and uh, I keep it in a little, um, I keep it in the cabinet. So it's not a huge deal, but I just kind of wanted to let you know why you might get the amber and what the whole purpose of it is. Okay. So next thing I want to talk about next supply, which is one of my very, very favorites is this tea steeper. So there are many different tea steepers that you can get. There's like a ball I've seen. Um, you know, you can get little uh, reusable tea bags. Those are kind of a mess, so I don't really love them. But this one I love. I can grind my herbs in the morning and then put them in this little tea steeper. So actually my herbs from this morning are still in here. That's why it's kind of wet. Um, and then you just place the tea steeper over your mug and then pour the hot water over. And then it comes with this little lid. So you put the lid on and that helps to keep all of the volatile oils and the medicinal properties into your tea or your infusion, whatever you're making. I really like these ones because I can make larger batches. Um, I can make my own herbal blends and I just find the ball is a little bit small and a little bit annoying to use. So these are my favorite. I have 
a couple of them and I got them on Amazon. There are a few different ones. Do get the lid. I recommend getting the lid. Um, if you don't have the lid, the other thing that you can do is put the top to a mason jar over the top just to keep the steam in. You don't want all your medicinal properties evaporating out. That would be a bad thing. This one's cool too because when you're done steeping, you can just place it here and it holds the water in and you don't get water everywhere. So that's one of my favorite herbal investments that I've made because I love making my own tea blends in the morning. So I highly suggest getting something like that. Okay, next I want to talk about oil. If you are making herbal infused oils, which I highly, highly, highly suggest you do, then you will need to invest in some sort of carrier oil to use. So always use organic. I hope that goes without saying because this stuff is going inside your body. And please avoid oils like canola, vegetable oil, and mineral oil. These oils are highly processed and not good for the body. They're not good for eating and they're not good for putting on your skin. So I really avoid eating them as well. Um, okay. So organic olive oil is actually the easiest to come by. This is a big bottle. This is a two liter, two quart, uh, bottle. I got at Costco. This is organic cold extracted, which is nice. Um, and it's extra virgin olive oil. So I think this was like less than $10, which is actually pretty amazing. If you look into how much work goes into making oil and how many olives it actually takes to make this much oil. It's insane. I know that because my friend's parents have uh, olives on their property and I spent an entire day with them harvesting oil or harvesting olives. And it really didn't make that much oil, which was shocking. So anyways, I digress. You can get olive oil easily at your local grocery store. This is probably the easiest to come by, but just beware the olive oil does have a bit of a peppery smell and taste. So if this is something that you're gonna be using for skincare, that may not be ideal. You may not care. It's also a little bit greasier than I would say some, than something like jojoba oil, which is my favorite. So, but it's easy to get. So for beginners, it's a great place to start if you don't want to order, order like a gallon of jojoba oil, which I found is about a dollar more per ounce than olive oil. Other oils that you can check out, um, although I do want to mention olive oil is nice if you're going to make culinary infused oils to put in your food. Okay, other oils that you can use are for skin, almond oil, apricot kernel oil, coconut oil, sesame oil, avocado oil, and again, jojoba oil is my favorite for the skin. So do make sure that when you're purchasing oils that you're checking for ingredients because a lot of times there can be other filler oils that are inside and you're not getting the pure oil itself. So just as a rule of life, always check your label, always read the ingredients, no matter what you're buying, whether it be food, whether it be a smoothie, whether it be oil, whatever it is, always read your ingredients because unfortunately there are a lot of companies out there who are trying to just make as much money as possible. And so they put a lot of fillers and crap ingredients into the things that we're ingesting, which end up not supporting our health. So yeah, side note. So I'm going to place some resources down in the description for places that you can buy bulk carrier oils. Um, some places are Bulk Natural Foods, Centra Foods, Jaffe Brothers, Napa Valley Naturals, and Soper's Choice. Shout out to Cami McBride for sharing those resources with me. I'll leave the links below as I mentioned. Okay, the next supply you may want to get for yourself is a mortar and pestle. So this is a wood one that I have. I also have a ceramic one, I believe, which is the one I use every morning. Um, so the thing that I want you to know about the mortar and pestle is that the reason why you might buy whole herbs instead of powdered herbs. So when you buy the herbs in their whole form, there's less oxygen touching the outside of the herbs, as opposed to if you're buying them pre-powdered, everything's already begun to oxidate. So when you buy herbs in the whole form, you can powder them or grind them in your mortar and pestle yourself. And then they're actually gonna be fresher and gonna make you fresher medicine. So when possible, do get yourself the whole version of the herb and powder it yourself, either in your mortar and pestle, or you could do it in your blender, or you could do it in like a little spice grinder if you have one of those. I really love 
uh, I have a little ritual in the morning. I get out my mortar and pestle. I put in the herbs that I want for my tea for that day. I grind them up and it's really nice because I get to, you know, interact with the herb. I get to feel like I'm kind of making a little concoction and then I get to grind it and break it up and smell all the yummy volatile oils and things that are coming out of the herbs. And it also just makes me feel, you know, connected with my ancestors. I get to do it the old fashioned way. And I personally really like that. So this is about what you like and what you want, but just sharing. Um, these are my favorites and this is something that I really love doing. So with things like herbal honey, and if you're going to make yourself, you know, spice blends, like I mentioned, it is pretty important that you get the herbs ground as fine as possible because you don't really want to be eating like chunks, you know, you don't want a chunk of herbs showing up in your honey. So, uh, but for things like herbal oils and tinctures and teas, it's not as important that you're getting the herb fully, fully ground up. So that's when a mortar and pestle is nice. It's totally up to you, but yeah, those are my thoughts on that. Okay. Next is a funnel. So it's very helpful to have some different size funnels. I have a small one actually. So I think I bought, this was a set of three and I have a smaller one than this even that works well for when I'm filling little jars like this. Uh, really nice for not getting oil everywhere. I highly recommend that. Uh, you can also get funnels that fit on top of a mason jar, which is nice for when you're, you know, creating stuff in a mason jar. Um, Cause sometimes it can be a pain in the butt, the herbs go everywhere. So it is really nice to have funnels. These are stainless steel, which are better than plastic ideally. Uh, but whatever you can get your hands on. Those are helpful. Next, I want to mention beeswax. Beeswax is great for if you plan to make herbal salves or herbal butters or lip balm. This is an ingredient that's going to help the oil firm up and it's going to create that firm texture in your salve. So I have been using the Sky Organics brand. I get them on Amazon and these are the little pellets. Uh, you can also get them in like bars. I just find the pellets are easier to melt. Beeswax does need to come to a certain medium high temperature in order to melt. So I just find that the little pellets are easier. Um, the thing you'll notice when you go to purchase your beeswax is they have the golden beeswax and then they also have, or yellow it says, or they have white beeswax. I recommend just getting the yellow because it's not treated to it. I don't know if, what the process is of getting it from yellow to white, I would imagine some sort of bleaching or something. But um, the yellow is really amazing. It has like a, this beautiful honey smell to it. It has more medicinal properties in it. I learned from Rosemary Gladstar. So I would suggest sticking with the yellow unless it's really important to you to not have that yellow color. Um, but I recommend the yellow and this stuff smells so good. I really like that brand too. Make sure you're getting organic. Again, organic, organic. Okay, next is a kitchen scale right here. It's really, really nice to have for measuring the weight of your herbs. I typically measure my herbs in ounces, definitely for herbal infused oils and also for measuring other recipes. I don't tend to use a lot of recipes, but I try to record how much of things that I am using in case the recipe turns out to be a great success and I want to be able to recreate it. Um, you can get a kitchen scale for probably $10 or less on Amazon. It is nice to have. It's also great if you find recipes that you want to create uh, on, you know, on the internet or whatever, to be able to know exactly how many, how much herbs you're using. It's quite helpful. So I do recommend grabbing yourself a kitchen scale. Okay. Next is a measuring cup for measuring your liquids in volume. So this is especially helpful for herbal infused oils, which is where I use mine the most. You probably already have one in your kitchen, so that's great. Um, I like to measure mine in ounces, but you may prefer to measure in other ways. So just take note, there's like, you know, cups and liter, milliliter, all that. I suggest doing it in ounces. Um, the other thing to take note of is this one starts at eight ounces. So I actually have another measuring cup that goes below eight ounces. And I like using that because typically when I do a batch of herbal infused oils, I'm using eight ounces or less. 
So if I'm doing an eight ounce batch of something, I want to be able to sometimes do one ounce of rose, one ounce of calendula, one ounce of something else. And I want to be able to measure that. So be sure that if you, I, I would suggest getting a measuring cup that measures below eight ounces. Um, so it's not a huge deal if you can't do that, but just a little tip and something that I've found. Um, I don't use this one as much. I actually have a different one around here somewhere, but I just wanted to show you this one because I know it's recognizable to most people and probably in your kitchen already. Okay, next is a nut milk bag. Okay, this is a bag for making nut milk, as you may have guessed. So this is super helpful for straining your herbal oils, your tinctures, your infused vinegars. Uh, I really love using this nylon nut milk bag because I find cheesecloth and muslin to be really messy and really hard to clean. So um, I know that a lot of people actually just throw out their muslin or cheesecloth after the first time of using it. I've never used muslin. I have used cheesecloth and I cannot imagine trying to clean it and reuse it because it is just a mess. It also has a really inconsistent weave where lots of bits of your herbs can get through. This is very fine weave, which you want. So you, you could probably use honestly any fabric, um, but I really like these. I've probably, I got two of them when I first ordered them and I probably, I've been using these for over a year um, at least. And this one has a tiny little hole in it, but other than that, They've worked great. They clean really well. I just clean them with soap and water and then I hang them out in the garden and let them air dry. And they're awesome. Yeah, I, I'm super happy with those. So I just got these on Amazon. I searched nut milk bag. They also have like huge nut milk bags. So just make sure you're not buying one of the massive, massive ones. Okay. And next we have your herbs, okay? So obviously, if you're going to make herbal medicine, you're going to need your herbs. I suggest getting herbs from your local farm or apothecary or your own garden if you can. But if those options aren't available to you, I'm going to give you a few options of quality places to order from online. Remember, always organic. So some basic herbs that are great to start with. Chamomile, lavender, rose, hibiscus peppermint, rosemary, ginger, elderberry, ashwagandha, echinacea, oat straw. I could go on and on and on. I suggest going on my YouTube channel and searching in the beginner herbalism or the recipes playlist. You might get some inspiration there for um, herbs, to, different herbs to start with, whether you're looking for skin herbs or nervine herbs for stress and anxiety. I have a video about that. Um, herbs you can make tea with, things like that. So just if you're not sure where you want to start, check out my YouTube channel. Um, there's lots of different ideas there. And yeah, that'll give you an idea of where you could start. If you're brand new to herbalism, I suggest starting with herbs that you're familiar with or that you're curious about. You don't have to try anything scary or anything intimidating. You could literally just go to your grocery store and get some fresh herbs from the produce, produce department or you could buy some tea and use the tea bags, or you could go to the spice section and buy some dried spices. So if you just need to keep it super basic, you can start there. If you want some one-on-one -on -one guidance around this, I actually have sessions where I uh, sit with you and like you share with me what's going on in your health. And then I recommend one to two basic herbs to support you. And then I teach you how to make medicine from those herbs. So if you're someone who likes more of a one-on-one -on -one touch, then I'll leave the link in the description below and you can check out those sessions. So here are some places that you can purchase bulk herbs, which is cheaper. And I definitely recommend doing this. I'll leave the links in the show notes, but the names are Mountain Rose Herbs, Star West Botanicals, uh, Frontier Natural Products Co-op, Golden Poppy Herbal Apothecary, Anima Mundi Herbals, and Banyan Botanicals. All the links will be below. Okay, finally, my final thing, my final supply I recommend for beginners is the Herbal Kitchen book. The last recommendation I want to make is that you get this book. It has so many awesome recipes. It is just basically helping you bring herbs into your kitchen, which is an amazing way to get started because we all eat. And especially if you have kids or, you know, you don't want to necessarily make 
medicines. You can just make your food more medicinal. So in this book, she gives recipes for herbal waters, herbal drinks, herbal smoothies, herbal honey, herbal vinegar, herbal cordials, which is alcohol infused with herbs. Um, I did once a rum infused with apple and cinnamon. Oh my God, that was so good. Um, herbal culinary oils, herbal ghee, herbal pesto, herbal sprinkles and salts, as I mentioned, making your own spice blends, herbal baths and foot soaks, and herbal meals. So this is a great resource. There's also a section where she shares about 50 different healing herbs and spices, which I have found super, super helpful uh, as a resource for just continuing to learn about basic herbs. So I think this book is probably some of the best $15 that I've spent in my herbal journey. So you can grab it on Amazon and I highly recommend it. I am not sponsored. I just love it. If you watch my other videos, you'll know that I reference this book a lot. So highly recommended. All right. Well, there you go. I hope this list of my favorite herbal supplies has helped you. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to get notified notified when I post videos every week. You can also check out my Herbalism for Beginners playlist, which has tons of content like this. And I also have a recipes playlist where you can enjoy making some of my favorite recipes with me. If you are on Instagram, come over and say hi. I'm Erin with two N's. I'll post the links to that in the um, in the description below, as well as my offerings. And I have an apothecary where you can buy, you know, herbal creations and medicines that have come straight from my hands. So I'll link that below as well as my new podcast, which I mentioned. And I also do one-on-one -on -one sessions. I also do one-on-one -on -one sessions and I have an herbal oils video class as well. If you want to go deeper into making herbal oils with me and you want more of a handheld guided experience, that will be below. Um, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for listening. I hope this has been helpful. Feel free to leave me any questions in the comments. If you've made it this far in the video and you don't know what to comment, leave me the plant, the little plant in the pot. Um, and feel free to also leave me questions and requests for future videos that you want to see. As I mentioned, this video was a request from a subscriber. So you know who you are. Thank you so much. And I will see you guys next time. Take care.